Manti Teo had an absolutely astounding senior year. His grandmother and girlfriend, Lene Kakua, had died the same night. He dedicated his season to them. It was an amazing story. I mean, they were with me, you know. I miss them. One problem, his girlfriend did not exist. Ready, real man? Yeah. I created this fictional character, Lene. I totally felt fear. I didn't have courage to just be like, this is who I am. I didn't expect it to blow up so quickly. That was a hell of a documentary. And let me just start by saying one of the worst parties in the entire story is the people at Deadspin, the people that put out this story in the first place. They're saying, oh, we put it out because we wanted to highlight how bad mainstream media is at reporting on sports. No, you did it because you're a gossip rag and you wanted people to view your website. And in an effort to get those clicks, you undermined somebody's self-esteem. You destroyed this guy's reputation for a few views. So let's just... Call that what it is. Look, I have a lot of thoughts about this, so I'm going to try and organize this. Thoughts about Manti Teo and then thoughts about Renaya. As it relates to Manti Teo, look, here's what I think. Whenever there is a bad breakup or, or a bad uh, interaction with other people, I think it's important that we all sort of step back and, and take stock. What piece of this negative interaction is mine, and what piece of it is someone else's? And I think this is true, by the way, for romantic relationships, familial relationships, work relationships. It doesn't matter. Whenever there's conflict or something goes south, we should all step back and go, okay, like, what can I learn from this? And my first reaction watching this documentary is to go, this poor kid was just a victim. Man, Titeo did nothing wrong. We can't be critical. But the more I think about it, the more I think that, that he or someone in his shoes could learn from what happened there. To me, it's all about intimacy or Manti Teo's discomfort with intimacy. So, so let me explain. This is a kid that was a standout football star, right, when he was in Hawaii. And he gets recruited across the country and decides he's going to go, because of his faith, to South Bend, Indiana and play football for Notre Dame. He is there and he feels totally isolated, right? There's a major culture shift going to Notre Dame. And he's not making the relationships he wants initially, so he goes online. And online, he creates this romantic relationship with who we later find out is Renaya, a man. And I think that anybody that hears that goes, wait a second, you have a football star, an All-American at Notre Dame, and he, who likely has, I'm not saying he could have any woman at Notre Dame, but I am sure he has some options at Notre Dame in person. Why would he go online? And Manti's explanation is, look, I felt isolated. There's not a big Polynesian community in South Bend, Indiana. So I went online for it. And I'm a football star. And so with that stardom comes pressure. And people that want to be with you are, are there because of the stardom, but not because they want to be with you as the person. So I went online. And I'm, you know, I'm really invested in football. I don't have time to have a traditional relationship. And so I went online. I think all of those things at first glance make... No, I, I don't think they make sense. I, I think they're I think they're excuses. I, I believe, I agree with the, you're in South Bend, Indiana, and there's not much of a community there. There's, there's not a community there like there was in Hawaii, and so you go online for that. I get that. But the reality is, at least the way it's portrayed in the documentary, Manti Teo was exceptionally popular at Notre Dame. He had lots of relationships. And at some point you look at it and go, is it true that you really felt disconnected from the people there? Is there really not a large enough Polynesian population there? Could you have not gone outside and created relationships elsewhere with people that reminded you of home? I don't discount the distress that would be caused by the culture shift. If I were working, if I were his therapist, though, I would have been saying something, something to him like, hey, if, if you don't leave your dorm room, if you don't go out there and find community, it's never going to come. So at some point, Manti, it's on you to find the social support that you need in person. So I think that that's a fair critique, although I, I am empathetic to his experience. Now, as far as being a star and not being able to have a relationship, and as far as him uh, not having time to be in a relationship, I think those two excuses are BS. There are a lot of exceptionally famous people that build strong relationships. There are a lot of exceptionally busy people that build healthy, strong relationships in college. So so for me, that it just doesn't add up. To me, there's more to the equation here that we just don't know about. I think that Manti, like I would love to know. I looked up looked it up online. I couldn't find it. Did he date anybody in high school? What was his relationships like? In, what were they like in high school? What was 
that what were the family dynamics around intimacy? Uh, what does his you right? He he was Mormon. Was Church of Latter Day Saints? What's what's how was intimacy discussed in his faith? I think something there, whether it was trauma, his faith, the fam, I don't something gave him an immature view of what a relationship really looked like. And so as a consequence, I don't think he felt comfortable with himself diving in fully. And so he did it online where he had distance and space and control and ultimately a lack of authenticity, right? He was authentic, but the other party wasn't. And if I were his coach or his therapist at that time, I would have been saying to him, hey, trust yourself, trust your, your ability to navigate intimacy in a relationship. Put, put yourself out there. Have faith that you can do it. And it's, and it's so sad. Like now that we have distance on it, we see the whole picture. It's so sad that when this poor kid needed to be built up and supported, it, right, he needed a positive relationship, the person that he trusted, I mean, and he kind of trusted, right, online, in the relationship that he built to protect himself, he still got bitten in a horrible way. So that brings us to Renaya, who catfished Manti Teo under the name Lene. So, so the story is, and my first sort of reaction to it is, okay, this is all about gender. This is a guy, Renaya at the time, you know, lived in a very strict household, didn't really know what his identity was, but he was unhappy and, you know, lonely and had no outlet. And because he couldn't be who he really wanted to be in real life, he went online and, as, a, as an outlet. And so he, he, under the name Lene, started dating different guys and, and felt supported. And it, that was the person he wanted to be. And so this is really just this sort of sad story where you have somebody that's, ex that you have someone that's transgendered that is learning about themselves and just happened to clash with Manti Teo. But, you know, but both parties are really well-meaning and it just got out of hand. That's the story. And I, I got to tell you, the more I think about it, the more I think it's absolute BS. This has, in my mind, this has nothing to do with gender. Gender may be the motivation for Renaya to go online and act like Lene. I got it. But the reality is that Lene knew exactly what she was doing when she when she infiltrated Manti Teo's life. Lene put her needs above and beyond that of Manti Teo. And, and quite honestly, she she maneuvered and manipulated him in a super destructive way. Right? If this was just an outlet for Lene, then Lene could have, when it got too serious, could have just bailed, could have deleted her profile, could have broken up with Manti Teo, could have been transparent with Manti Teo, could have just stopped answering Manti There's a lot of things you could do, but instead what she did was she got in a car accident and then she had him calling her every single day for a month while she acted like she was on a breathing machine. So he felt he was taking care of her. Then his senior year... She kills herself right before a football game so that he can experience the grief of, A, his, the loss of his grandmother, and then the loss of his girlfriend. And then she brings herself back to life again. If we bucket this as, oh, this is just an issue of, you know, gender identity, I think it, it, it gives her a massive excuse. And the reality is that her behavior was reprehensible. She was... She, it, there is absolutely, I mean, I, I, I would be, I've not met her, but just based on what I have seen, this looks like someone who definitely has a personality disorder. I would argue she's borderline, definitely has narcissistic traits. This whole idea of every time that she felt like she was being dismissed by Manti Teo, every time she felt like she lacked control over Manti Teo, she did something reactive. She faked a car accident, right? She faked her death and came back. I mean, she was just manipulating him on and off, on and off, on and off. And I think a really sick way. That's what I think. So let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. How do you view Manti? Was he responsible for any of this? How do you view Renaya or, or Naya now? W was she responsible for this? What do you, and what do you think about the people at Deadspin?